Spike Lee's 1989 film, Do the Right Thing, evaluates society's conflict with racism. Though the film is set in Brooklyn, the array of characters comes from many different backgrounds and cultures. Lee's focus on racial identity is made clear through a mixture of narrative and film style. Lee interweaves his views on racism by exploiting his character's racial comments. This ain't Korea or China or wherever you come from. You get some Miller High Life in this funky joint! Right from the beginning, our radio personality tries to wake up not only the entire neighborhood, but the viewer as well. Although the rising temperatures allude to many intense conflicts later to come in the film, in this opening scene, the film instantly suggests the topic of race being instrumental within this film's narrative. The color for today is black. That's right, black, so you can absorb some of these rays and save that heat for winter. So you want to get on out there, wear that black, and be involved. As the film progresses, Lee identifies with several characters as they develop conflicts between one another. However, this filmmaker's style of filming intense arguments is shown through his cinematography. Speak English first, all right? The most monumental conflict comes near the end of Do the Right Thing between an Italian restaurant owner, Sal, and a trio of disgruntled African Americans who have spent the majority of the film boycotting the pizzeria because of the racial inequality expressed in the Wall of Fame. Lee's use of the camera intensifies the scene's violent behavior and clarifies who is actually doing the right thing. The camera is positioned almost exactly on the 180 degree line, placing the viewer in the middle of the conversation and topic at hand. Lee demands the viewer's attention by having the characters look directly into the camera. Narratively, this is a dispute over having neighborhood recognition of popular African Americans, but Lee suggests the shift in power by slightly tilting the camera. Radio Rahim and Buggin' Out have more low-angled shots, making them look more superior, while Sal is a much higher angle, insinuating his negative outlook on racial equality. Additionally, this film identifies with African-American racism through water hosing and police brutality. But for this director, it is evident that his main issue with racism is the ethnic slurs adapted into everyday language. One scene that encompasses these racial slurs comes from Mookie and Pino's argument over resolving stereotypes. Dago, Wab, Guinea, garlic bread, pizza sling, and spaghetti bin, and Victor Moan, Perry Como, Luciano Pavarotti, solo meal, non singer motherfucker. Although this scene serves no narrative purpose, it's through the harsh dialogue, cinematography, and disoriented jump cuts that stylistically unveil Lee's message. As the camera dollies into each character, their stereotypes are directed towards some sort of ethnicity. Unlike classical Hollywood cinema, which tends to easily resolve controversial issues, Spike Lee intentionally leaves the viewer with many questions at the end of his films. This writer, director, producer, and actor declines to resolve the idea of racism within this community through his style and characters. By the end, Sal's Pizzeria has been destroyed, Radio Rahim has passed away, and the neighborhood we have learned so much about is left divided even more so. And others agree that the narrative may fade to black but continues through the mind of its viewer. In Craig Watson's article Spike's Joint, he indicates that Lee's work goes further than the very realistic climax. He states that narrative aperture intentionally invites the production of meaning. And furthermore, the viewer can develop their own opinion on this battle of racial supremacy. However, the main question Spike Lee leaves the viewer to contemplate lies within the title of this film. Who can be justified for their violent actions against multiple ethnicities and superiority in general? By not answering this question, it adds a sense of realism to their fictional experience. And this filmmaker defines his own form of altruism by crafting an innovative style that meanwhile builds upon a character-based narrative with no intended resolution. Effectively, the viewer understands many of the culture's struggles for racial identity just within the streets of Brooklyn. Different than classical Hollywood cinema, Lee's film targets a resolution amongst society, not just within the confines of the screen. Here it is, love and hate. Therefore, this film is undoubtedly one's continuous evaluation of doing the right thing. Doctor, come on, what, what? Always do the right thing. I